Let me read to you a passage from the 25th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 1 to 13. It's the Gospel for Friday of the 21st week of Ordinary Time. St. Matthew writes, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know either the day or the hour. That's from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. What does it suggest to us? Well, take any day of the year and listen to or watch the news. It speaks of sudden death coming upon individuals and groups time and again. Death without warning to persons of all ages, all conditions and callings. The greatest persons can be suddenly snuffed out, from Julius Caesar in classical times, to Lincoln in the 19th century, and Gandhi, the Kennedys and Martin Luther King in the 20th. Death comes to all, and to very many it comes suddenly, whether by natural or unnatural means. Such is the human condition. And our Lord warns his disciples to understand that they must take this into account because an enormous amount depends on how we are found at the moment death visits us. In this sense, the whole of life is a preparation for the moment of death. Our Lord, as usual, tells a story to drive home this point. The setting of the story is a wedding feast, and the maids were waiting the arrival of the bridegroom. There were foolish ones among them who did not foresee a sudden arrival of the bridegroom, and wise ones who took this possibility into account. The upshot was that the foolish ones were left outside with the doors locked to them. So apart from anything, Wickedness is foolish. Living a life of sin is, as some might say, a bit dumb. It is foolish because, even from the point of self-interest, it shows poor thinking. We must think through our situation as vulnerable creatures whose lives are radically exposed to any number of threats which may at any point cut it off. And then what? Then comes the judgment, and its upshot depends on our readiness for the bridegroom at the moment of his arrival. If death can come suddenly, and if an unending eternity depends on the welcome we are able to give to the bridegroom when he comes, then the whole of our life ought be spent in standing ready for this arrival. Our parable not only teaches us to stand ready, lest death overtake us suddenly, 
It also, and more importantly, tells us who it is whose coming death announces. It is the bridegroom. It is the bridegroom of the church and therefore the bridegroom of the soul, the soul of each one of the church's faithful. Christ describes himself as the bridegroom and the kingdom of heaven as a wedding feast. This ought to be a wonderful thought all through life, giving joy to the thought of death. Death is not just a loss and possibly a sudden and catastrophic loss which we must always be ready for. Rather, it is also a gain. The whole of life is not a dark preparation for a sudden loss. Rather, it is a joyful preparation for a beautiful gain. The gain of entry into the wedding feast of Christ and sanctified mankind. Death in this light is something which can be viewed with serenity and optimism. And if life has many sorrows, then death can be looked forward to as a great door to something far more beautiful to come. Indeed, we must develop the habit of looking on life and death in these terms, because this is central to all that Christ has revealed to us. In death, something beautiful can come upon us suddenly, and that beautiful thing is the arrival of Christ to take us into the wedding feast of heaven with him. So let us stand ready to welcome him. Our whole life ought be tantamount to a readiness for heaven because of the way we are striving to live. Life is short, no matter how long it is, and eternity is unending, no matter how long we choose to imagine it. This beautiful finale to death casts a light, a bright and joyful light, across the paths of life, provided, provided we live accordingly. If we do not, death will indeed be a catastrophe. Every day counts, as does every moment. Let us live in the present as if the present were to be the last. Every day we ought begin again. So then, now I begin. I must keep my lamp filled with the oil of faith in Jesus and good works done in him and for him. He, the bridegroom, could come at any moment. Let me not fool myself by saying that it will be some time yet. I simply do not know. My whole life should be lived in such a way that were he to come now, I would be ready to welcome him with my bright and burning lamp. 